Another interesting characteristic that exists here, and as I, as I break this soil away, you'll notice that there's a very white, chalky material down in here. And the, the soil above it is, as I take that and feel it, is quite coarse and has a, a, quite a bit of fine sand in it, which is untypical of soils in this particular area. So what we've had here from volcanic action a long time ago is deposition or a layer of ash that has been deposited in this soil, and then of course other soils is, have been deposited and developed over the top of this. This is not unusual in this area. Uh, we see it in some locations and not in others, but this being a low-lying location, it would have been an area where this ash would have accumulated to a greater thickness or depth. As we do topsoil and subsoil today at this site and evaluate texture, just for some variability, even though we, could, we should do topsoil here, we will, subsoil we could do here where we'd expect there to be more clay than what we have up here above, we're going to do the subsoil texture down here on this material because it'll provide us some more variability uh, and a different look at texture than what we would have from typical of soils in this area. So with that then, one of the things we need to evaluate at this particular location is the depth of the topsoil. And I've placed this stake in there to indicate the depth of the topsoil, so we need to measure how far we are from here up to or right close to the soil surface. And there are a number of ways you could do this. You could do it with a tape measure, you could do it with a sheet of paper. I happen to do use it with my hand because I know the depth between my thumb and my uh, middle finger is eight inches. And if I go that way, and then that way again, I'm at a depth of approximately 15 to 16 inches here at this location. So we need to take this information, 15 to 16 inches of topsoil, and compare that to what our site card said in terms of the original topsoil depth to determine how much soil we've lost at this site due to erosion. The next thing I'm going to do is to determine texture of the soil at this site. Uh, take a sample of soil up in here to use as topsoil. You'll recall from our earlier lab, to determine texture by feel, we're best to, to uh, wet the soil, get it at the proper moisture content, determine the plasticity or stickiness of it, which gives us an indication of the clay, form a ball, and then see how well the soil will ribbon or will not ribbon. This particular soil has a fair degree of stickiness or plasticity to it. And as I start to ribbon this material, I've got just a little bit wetter than I want, so I'll work it for a little bit more here to, to let it dry out. As I start to ribbon this material, it appears that it, it would ribbon out there somewhere in the range between one and two inches before it would break off. Got that just a little bit too wet. The other thing I'm going to do is to saturate some of the soil and rub it between my fingers to determine the amount of grittiness that is there. Grittiness, of course, indicating the amount of sand. This soil is very, very smooth. So it's a very smooth soil. It will ribbon between one and two inches in length. And from that, based on our first lab, you should be able to go back and determine the textural class of this soil. Very slick or smooth when saturated ribboning strength between one and two inches. So follow down through your flow diagram that you utilized in the first lab, and with that information, determine the textural class of the surface of the soil here. You don't have to have the exact textural class name because if you look at the land evaluation card, that texture is going to fit into one of five groups. Is it a coarse, moderately coarse, uh, medium, uh, moderately fine or fine textured soil. So you just need to, need to be able to place it into one of those groupings. Now for the subsoil, I'm going to take some soil from down here in this layer of material that's been deposited right along with the ash. You know, first thing you notice, obvious difference here is the, is the color. Part of that is caused by a lack of organic matter at the, at the greater depth than what we had up here in the surface of the soil but part of it is also caused because of the difference in constituency of the sand, silt, and clay. 
bring this up to the right moisture content. First thing I notice as I start to work this soil is it is much, much grittier than the soil up above. I can determine this by rubbing it between my thumb and forefinger. There's, there, there's a lot of grit in this soil as compared to the topsoil. Okay, this soil will form a ball, but it also has a lot of grit, and as I try to ribbon this material, it really doesn't have much of an ability to ribbon. It breaks off pretty easily. So I would say the ribboning ability of this soil is weak, it has a substantial amount of grit, but it will form a fairly stable ball that doesn't break totally apart when I squeeze it, but doesn't have a lot of, um, of pressure against me, against my uh, force of squeezing it either. Okay, so with that information, you know, evaluate what the topsoil texture would be and what the subsoil texture would be and place it into the appropriate categories on your land evaluation sheet. Also determine permeability. Permeability is going to base, be based primarily on the texture of the surface soil and it could also be affected by the degree of firmness or consistence in the subsoil. At this particular site, I don't see this as being a particularly firm uh, or compacted type of subsoil, so base your permeability here pretty much just on texture. We do not see any restrictions in the profile throughout the depth of the profile that would inhibit rooting depth, so you should basically evaluate soil depth here based on the total length of the exposed site, which is at least six feet or more in depth.